So what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, YouTube? It's your boy, GR8JSM. Oh, and, um, well, I've been black for 37 years. <laughs> and uh, I say that because there's a lot of black people in America who don't know their history outside of slavery. And growing up as a kid, I always I just had this idea like, man, my history could not have started on the plantation. And uh, so now we're at a point where we're able to test our DNA to find out uh, a generalization of where we may have come from. So I did my DNA test with uh, uh, Ancestry DNA. They're linked to Ancestry.com. You know, you build the whole tree. Got a bunch of family members that are already on Ancestry.com. So I went ahead and did uh, the Ancestry DNA. And uh, here's some of my results. So it turns out that 39% of my DNA can be traced back to Nigeria. Now, years ago when I was a kid, my mom would always tell me that, you know, we're part Nigerian and, you know, that's where, uh, that's where our family DNA starts. And I kind of like, I wanted to believe, but my mom would also say certain things like, um, fish and milk products will cause diarrhea. And whenever I ate fish and, you know, milk, I would have, you know, an upset stomach. But then not realizing that I was actually lactose intolerant. So as I got older, some of the things that she said didn't hold as much weight. But in the back of my mind, I always kind of thought like, huh, you know, my African people come from Nigeria. Now she said that there were some people in the family who had done some research and they, they uh, you know, were able to trace back, you know, this and that, and yeah, someone wrote a book and they have their PhD and all these kind of, you know, really cool things, but I never had solid evidence. So to be able to see this with some type of proof, you know, some type of genetic uh, testing or, you know, verification, it uh, felt pretty good. 25% uh, of my uh, DNA can be traced back to Cameroon, uh, Congo, and what is it? Uh, the West Bantu people. So Cameroon, Congo, and West Bantu people. I don't know what that means. Um, I, know where, <laughs> I know where Cameroon and Congo are, um, but you know, it's, uh, I, I don't know much about them, uh, the West Bantu people. Um, Surprise! <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I've seen, uh, what was that movie with the, the gorillas? It was Gorillas in the Mist, and they were in the Congo. Uh, you know, Coney 2012. Uh, that's all I know about the Congo. I probably should do some more research. I'm sounding pretty much like an idiot right now. <laughs> but then there's 8% of my DNA that comes from Ivory Coast and Ghana, which I mean, anybody who's talked to me, you know, in person uh, knows that I am a big fan of Ghana and, you know, uh, at some point I do want to do some traveling and head over to Ghana and see what things are like and, you know, go to Accra, you know, be able to just see everybody, you know, the, uh, the Wodomaya, you know, the Achampos, you know, Vanessa Canby, all these, these YouTubers that I watch that are from, you know, uh, Africa that are really promoting Africa heavy. You know, it seems like Ghana might be the place to, you know, go visit. Now, another 8% shows that it comes from Benin and Togo. Now, Benin, I don't know much about, but I heard of this thing called the Wall of Benin. And uh, at one point, you know, some people were speculating that the Wall of Benin was bigger than the Wall of China, or at least it covered more distance. Uh, they later on found out that it wasn't really that long. But, uh, so the Great Wall of China is still the Great Wall of China. But Benin, uh, they had this huge wall. I think it was, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was made out of like metal or something like that. Uh, either way, you know, uh, Nigeria, uh, Benin, uh, these areas were doing metal castings of faces. Uh, you know, the African sculptures that they were making from metal, like they made a mold and then made a face from the mold and it was so lifelike that people couldn't understand like yo how, how are they doing this when people say stuff like that it kind of gets into me you know when i really think about it when somebody says oh how did these people 
do this. It's because they smart. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not too many other, you know, options. Like, yo, they, you know, they want to blame it on aliens. They want to blame it on, you know, some lost civilization. No, they are smart. Is it so wrong to just be a smart person? You know? So the next four categories of my DNA actually come from, uh, you know, the European countries. So there's Ireland, Sweden, uh, England, and Northwest Europe, uh, and Scotland. Now, that's 12% of my DNA. I don't think I have to go into too much detail on how that got in there. Black American, slavery, mixed, whatever, you know? Um, it is what it is. It's not that, you know, I'm, I'm ashamed, you know, to be a black American, but you can't deny the, the history. Slavery happened, uh, you know, Africans were taken from the continent, mistreated in the States, uh, and, you know, the outcome is me. Uh, I don't think that it was a necessary process. Um, if things had been different, you know, I may not be looking the way that I look now, but I'd probably still be here. The next piece of the DNA, which is probably equally as large as one of those other four, uh, Molly. So Molly, I get excited about because when I was young, my grandfather gave me this uh, movie and I can't seem to find it, but it was called the Songhai Princess. And um, Songhai was within the uh, modern day Molly and, uh, or the ancient Timbuktu. Right, some of the first colleges in the world, some of the smartest people in the world. Fun fact, Alexander the Great actually traveled to Timbuktu to go to the universities to learn and be taught mathematics by, you know, some of the Greeks. Now he also had his other teachers, you know, the, the philosophers, the Aristotles and, and, and guys like that. But he also went to Africa to study, um, meaning that they knew more than he did at some point. Not saying that, you know, uh, that was the end all be all, but he still had to travel to Africa to get, you know, educated on some things. So when people tell you that Africans, you know, they got these starving babies, they got flies on their eyes, they're dirty, their countries are poor. That's not necessarily the case. You know, it's not always, you know, just cut and dry. There's a lot of bad things that happened in Africa. There's a lot of things that Africa, the continent has contributed to the rest of the world. So it's just something to, you know, kind of keep your brain going. Songhai Princess talks about uh, this uh, this princess, and uh, they named her Nzinga. And it was funny because my brother was really little at the time uh, that we first got the movie, and he says, you know, I name thee Nzinga, and it would hold him up kind of like you know the Lion King, you know, with Simba. And it was really you know back. It, this was yeah, this was actually before the Lion King. Uh, and you know they talk about uh, the princess uh, being uh, kidnapped, and was she kidnapped or did she run away? I can't remember. But there was something about a witch. There was something about locusts. Uh, and then, uh, you know, when the, the princess was returned and, you know, live happily ever after. But it was, it was one of those African folklores. And it was really my first time seeing a black princess, um, you know, on a film. Most of the princesses I've ever saw were, you know, Disney princesses. Snow White, Belle, Cinderella, things like that. So to see a black princess from Africa you know, Timbuktu and, you know, present day Mali. And I was like, wow, one day I'd like to go, you know, see that. And as I got older uh, and I realized that the Songhai kingdom, um, you know, has you know, dissolved or, or been conquered, whatever the case was, it's not there now. But it was just really, um, it was really cool to see uh, a different story than, you know, the one that you always hear from Disney. Uh, so next is 2% coming from Senegal, right? anybody knows Senegal, you've heard of Akon, you know, Akon the rapper, you know, I'm so lonely. That's reassuring and it's empowering because think about it, what Akon is doing with Akon City and, you know, supplying uh, solar panels to all these, you know, villages and bringing electricity to some of these rural parts of, uh, you, know, you know, different countries and different uh, tribes and, and villages. It's amazing. And we always have this image of you know, black people not looking out for each other or black people always being against each other. But then when we see someone like Akon, you know, he made a fortune, you know, here in the United States with his uh, music and his entertainment. And he took that money and reinvested it into, you know, 
a lot of these African countries. And I really think that um, that's gonna be the future. Now the next three groups are, you know, in total 3%. So it's not a lot, but it's still something that's relative to my DNA. Eastern Bantu people. Now I don't know who they are, but uh, apparently I was a little bit more West than I was East. Uh, sometimes I kind of wish that I was a little bit more East, you know, for spiritual and biblical reasons. Because if you think about the East side of Africa, like Tanzania, that's where the Nile starts. Then the Nile flows North, but down. So like the, the, the lower part is actually higher than the Northern part. So the Nile river flows down into uh, Egypt. And then Egypt was, you know, one of the, the, the hubs of, you know, civilization, you know, way back when. But if you also think about it, as the Nile River opens up, uh, right before you go into Saudi Arabia, you know, you've got that, uh, you know, really holy religious land, you know, the, the Jerusalems, the Israels, and, and things like that. Um, and it would have been really, you know, cool to find out that I had some lineage to, you know, this holy land, this, this, uh, you know, northeastern Egypt, Israel, Jerusalem kind of, you know, area. A lot of those people were nomads, so they didn't necessarily stay in one place. But if you found that you had some lineage to, you know, that area, that'd be really cool. But the East Bantu people, I don't know who they are. Got to do a little more research. Then there is Northern Africa. So Northern Africa, uh, I see that, you know, kind of like the Morocco, the, the Libya, um, you know, that, that kind of area. Now, the crazy part is, is that when you really think about that, a lot of those people today are fair skin. Uh, they favor more of a, uh, an Arabian Middle Eastern look, uh, but they were taken over. And at one point, uh, it was dark skinned people uh, who lived in, you know, the, the northern parts, um, similar to the Moors. And there's a lot of stuff that, you know, isn't talked about in history, like, um, or at least history here in America, a lot of that stuff isn't talked about. We learn a lot about American history and we do a little bit of world civ, but we don't do a lot about the Northern African civilizations and, you know, the uh, evolutions and changes that they've gone through, you know, in their countries. And finally, the last little teeny piece Ethiopia and Eritrea. I think I'm saying it right. But here I am today in the United States of America as what they would call an African American or a black American. Um, more than 80% of my DNA is showing that I do have African lineage. So to be able to claim African American uh, with a more than 80% of my DNA coming from the continent of Africa, I'll accept that. If you are, we'll call it melanated, dark skin, black skin, brown skin, African American, or just black, find out your history. You'll be surprised at where you're from because it doesn't start with the American slave trade. You are more than chains, cotton, and, and whips. Powerful to know that where I came from, regardless of why you know I'm not there anymore, is a land where the people were able to accomplish so much. They were able to do you know so many great things, so many powerful things. But with that being said, this is your boy Jerry JSMO with GRAJSMO.com. And I'm at.